got an A from my Anyone that see, watches my knitting podcast would have seen that because I showed it. I showed it last week and I really hoped you didn't. Did you watch it? No, I didn't. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I wrote on, or I talked about how every now and then I'll hear you listening to my my podcast, but you typically don't listen to them the whole way through. Yeah, sorry. No, I'm glad Never you didn't watch it. I know. And I got a, a pair of knitted socks. I love them. <laughs> I know. You like my socks. Yes, You're ma'am. worth it. You're worth it. Thanks, honey. Yeah, so it's his birthday today, which means we're going to be making you... He chose salmon and rice for dinner mm. and chocolate espresso cake. Yum. Gluten-free, dairy-free. So I can eat it because I'm a little selfish that way. <laughs> Not really. I mean, I'm the one that re- requested. That's true. That and that cake. Whatever you want. And that cake is actually. That's true. I would just not eat. But that yeah. cake is really tasty. So I'll try to remember to link it, the recipe in, in the is. description down below. Tasty, um, but really rich. So you don't yeah, feel like you have to eat like a huge slice of it because it is just it hits spot. I can't yep. wait for that later. Yep. All right, gotta go get ready for it. Okay, so I wanted to quickly share my little grow station here. (laughs) Um, I started these by seed sometime in March. I have it marked down in my garden journal, but everything is coming along pretty nicely. These are mostly herbs, except this is um, lemon squash. I need to repot that. It is the stem is getting way too long. I need to bury, put it in a bigger pot, and bury it a bit more. But we've got um, parsley and basil, chamomile. Down here, I have various peppers. These little two trays here are actually some wild Maine lupin that I had found on one of our hikes last year, and I, um, I brought the, I dried the seeds. I brought them home and dried them. And I don't know that anything's going to grow because I planted these a couple of weeks ago. So, but I thought it was worth a shot. And then down here I have, these are all dahlias, um, eggplant, calendula, which I always plant calendula. So dahlias are um, something that I tried several years ago. I starting them by seed because I love dahlias, but it's I think it's a little pricey to buy the tubers, um, you know, off of farms or I guess you can even buy them at you know any actually anywhere that really sells seeds. They sell often sell dahlia tubers, but I had several years ago thought I'm just going to try it, so I bought a pack of dahlia seeds and I um, planted them like this, I started them inside, and then I moved them outside, and the only place I even had to plant them was a shady spot, which they like full sun. And they grew, and they flowered, and they were beautiful, and then in in the fall, I just dug up the tubers, and because I have to store them, I don't know if that goes for every, um, like, I think it's because of my zone, my planting zone, that I have to, they're too cold sensitive to leave out over the winter, so I just dig the tubers up in the fall. And bring them in. So now I just plant them by seed. And then I have um, some sunflowers here, which technically I think you're really, it's best just to start direct sow your sunflowers, but I always do them this way. Um, and then these are all tomatoes. So um, I have some cherry tomatoes, and then I also have these are Dresba and they're heirlooms. So these are from seeds that we collected. So yeah, that's my little update on that. And then over here is my mushroom growing station. (laughs) So this is my lion's mane and I actually just harvested this uh, I think over the weekend. I'll pop a picture in here of what that looked like in case you haven't seen it. And then over here, this is reishi which this is not one that you would just eat. This actually will need to be dried and then powdered. Um, And then black king oysters here. I haven't had any growth. I mean, fruit. I haven't had any fruit. There's lots of like mycelium going on here. You can see. (laughs) Just um, no fruit yet. So I'm trying to be patient. (laughs) 
<laughs> this one just happened so quickly that it's harder for me with these two now. Um, but yeah, I just come down and I, this is just water. I spritz them with water like once a day. And um, I had them up in my kitchen, but my kitchen counters were just between this, the kombucha and the sourdough, it was just like way too crowded. So there is, we have this one window. So I just moved it. They don't want like direct sunlight, but they're still getting some natural light here. I'm out here in my garden and I just thought I would show you guys. There's not really much, there's not much planted, but I do have some things coming up. So as you can see, I have some green onions over there. And then this is hill and I must have really I don't know what I did there when I was putting the seeds out because this is all this is all kale here and it's not I mean there's little bits coming up over here but I must have dumped a lot more there not even realized realizing it and then over here I have spinach and I think this is just where's my little yeah, greens, salad greens in there. Um, this is our asparagus patch. There's a couple that are starting to come up, so that's exciting. We usually get our asparagus in May. And then over here, I have Swiss chard. I have arugula, and then I planted another run of green onions. Just, um, like, you know, so they'll come in a little bit later than the first, the first batch. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful out today. It's gonna be in the 50s, I think. I didn't think it was supposed to be sunny, but it is right now, so I'm out here enjoying it. And, um, oh yeah, so let me show you what else. My fever few came back, and I didn't think it was going to, but it did, and I even had enough that I took a, a uh, one of the, like I took one of these, there were, three big patches of it so I took one of them when Brad replaced this board because this board had rotted out I moved it to another area and then these are all echinacea this columbine is huge I don't even I a bird must have dropped a seed there because I, I have never planted columbine here I have it planted in other areas in my around my house but never in here and then uh, that's an echinacea and then this is parsley that reseeded itself that is hyssop over there and those are carnations which the first time I planted them was last year and they are perennial and they didn't flower last year so I'm wondering if they're one of those kind of plants that flowered their second year so we'll see we will see they they stayed pretty much that color all winter which was really strange um, yeah and there's my little Lucy in our raspberry patch. So none of these other beds had been planting yet, planted yet, although a couple of weeks ago, or maybe that was just last weekend actually, it was, we went and uh, got manure off of our neighbor and friend and brought it up here. There's some salvia in there. And that way we kind of amended the soil, getting it ready so that when I when it's warm enough on a consistent basis, I can go ahead and plant. Um, and then Brad built me actually, this is a new bed. So this is brand new this year. He just built this for me that day that we amended the soil. And back here we have our, these are our blueberries. These are all blueberries in here, which their buds are good still. I was, We've had a couple of frosts this this week, and so I wasn't sure about that. This bush has lots of buds. Some of those back there do not. And then we have a fruit orchard, orchard, a fruit tree orchard back there. I don't know if you can see that. We don't really get much fruit off of those trees. Um, I think it's partially because we are we built our home in an old pasture, it, and so it was farmed for many many years. And then also, uh, so it's, it's probably something to do with nutrients. Um, and also the fact that, I don't know, maybe the, it's very rocky up here. <laughs> well, I remember when we built our house, there were so many very large rocks and 
like rock ledges underground. So, um, oh, and then one other thing here. I have this little patch of bee balm that I planted last year and it really did not do anything last year. So I'm curious to see what it'll do this year. Hi, Lucy. Hi. So that is a little garden tour. Not a whole lot going on. Oh, my lilacs. So, I love lilacs. Look at them, so beautiful. I have um, four, four lilac bushes. Yeah, I think so. And these, this one is huge, as is the one on the other side of my garden shed. And last year I went and I really trimmed them and pruned them. And so that, cause they had not produced flowers for a couple of years. So this year I have a decent, not very many. It's kind of disappointing cause I do love lilacs. They're one of my favorites. So I went outside today and did a little foraging just in my yard. Uh, dandelions. I wanted to make some dandelion tincture. So I went out and I dug up some uh, patches of dandelions. And now I am just cleaning them and uh, roots and leaves and also some flowers because I'm going to actually chop these mm -hmm. up and make a tincture with them. 
Um, it, dandelion actually has tons of benefits and um, really good for the liver. Even if you don't have liver problems, uh, the liver does get clogged up easily because it is constantly detoxing our body from the many toxins that we are exposed to in the foods we eat, as well as just in the environment and the things we put on our skin. So um, a clogged liver is not good. So that's the main purpose that I'm using this dandelion tincture for. Uh, it also has other benefits as well, but I encourage you to look it up if you're interested because there is a prolific amount of dandelions right now. So I'm just putting everything, uh, root, blood, uh, leaves, and some of the flowers, putting them into these jars. And I'm going to pour Everclear grain alcohol over. Just pay attention to the proof and the alcohol content. You want it to be very high. It extracts more of the nutrients out. So I'm going, you cover it up, uh, make sure everything's covered and then label it so you don't forget what it is. And then you just tuck it away in the pantry for, uh, I don't know, six to eight weeks. So these little bottles are Calangela tincture. And I actually made these um, well, when I had my, when my calendula was in bloom last summer, I dried it and then uh, I dried some for tea and then I also used some to make a tincture. So this actually, I just bottled this last week and so it had, what, nine months, which is a really long time, of, of marinating in the Everclear. The important thing is when you're doing a tincture, tincture is that you want to make sure you're using a um, like the right kind of alcohol. So, like it needs to be a very high proof, and so that's why I use this 75.5 percent um, percentage, and then it's 151 proof. So you can get that like you know at a liquor store or a wine and spirits store. But anyway, yeah, I just put it in these two bottles. One's a dropper and then the other one is um, like it, you can spray it in your mouth. You could spray it on your skin. Calandula is really good for inflammation. It's also good for the lymphatic system. So I take, um, I don't take it every day, but I will take the dropper fulls. I'll just kind of put it in my mouth and it, and it doesn't taste good because it's, it's very, it's alcohol, but um, and then you can also, I made the spray in case, you know, it's supposed to be good for various skin ailments. But um, you can also use, um, if you don't want to use alcohol, you can use glycerin, vegetable glycerin. And then I've also even heard of using uh, apple cider vinegar. But I'm pretty sure, from what I've read, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the um, high proof alcohol extracts the most out of your vegetable matter. So I have access to it. Um, I have no problem giving my kids, I mean, it's literally like nothing. It's not like they're gonna get drunk on it or anything like that. So I don't have any problem using the alcohol, but there are other alternatives if you're not comfortable with that. So I'm gonna wrap this video up for the day because it is my husband's birthday and he's on his way home. And I'm, so I'm in the process of making dinner. Um, and then the rest of the evening, we're going to be hanging out as a family. Our oldest son, Sergey, and his wife are coming over to enjoy the cake with us. And also, as far as uh, the tinctures and stuff like that, I am in, I am, I am learning. I don't know a lot. I'm very interested in learning about foraging and I've grown herbs and I've, I've been more of, I guess you could say a crunchy person for many years now, but I am very interested in herbalism and I plan on pursuing that um, probably even more in depth once all my kids are launched and out doing their own thing. Uh, for now, I just kind of learn as I go and I use YouTube. It's a great resource. And then I have a couple of books here at home that I use. So I don't I don't pretend to know everything. I know far from everything. I just know very little, but it's good to just, I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? So you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for following along and I'll talk to you next time.